Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Shrimad Bhagavatam playlist. And today we have reached the thirteenth verse from the first chapter of the first canto. And I'll just uh, speak about the speak the translations of the previous verse, uh, the twelfth verse, which we discussed in the last chapter, so that we are aware of the flow. All blessings upon you, O Sud Goswami. You know for what purpose the personality of Godhead appeared in the womb of Devaki as the son of Vasudev. So in that we saw what is the definition of Bhagwan, one who has the six opulences, and how he protects his pure devotees, and how he is, although he is equal to all, but he is especially inclined to his pure devotees, and. How he purifies us of our anarthas, all right? So that's very important to understand. And then now we are about to start the 13th verse, and the Sanskrit is difficult here, <laughs> but I'll try to pronounce. All right. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. All right, thirteenth verse. Tana shru shru mana nam arhasi anganu var nitum yasya yasya vataro puta nam chemaya cha bhavya cha bhavaya cha. Sorry. All right. So now we are going to discuss the incarnations, or that starts. Okay. O oh, Sudh Goswami, we are eager to learn about the personality of Godhead and his incarnations. Please explain to us those teachings imparted by previous masters, Acharyas. For one is uplifted both by speaking them and by hearing them. So, the beautiful thing here, the last, one is uplifted by both, both by speaking them and by hearing them. That is very crucial here. Purport the conditions for hearing the transcendental message of the absolute truth are set forth herein. The first condition is that the audience must be very sincere and eager to hear. Wow, classic. And the speaker must be in the line of disciplic succession from the recognized Acharya. The transcendental message of the Absolute is not understandable by those who are materially absorbed. Even Krishna says in the Gita, Bhogaishwaya prasaktanam taya padita chetasam Bhoga Aishwarya, one who is indulging in Bhoga and has too much, you know, Aishwarya, wealth, prosperity. Taya apahrita chetasam There, Rita, the knowledge has been stolen. Apahrita chetasam the Chetana has gone down, right? So the same thing is mentioned here. The transcendental message of the Absolute is not understandable by those who are materially absorbed. What does it mean to be materially absorbed? Materially absorbed means materialistic pleasure is the end goal of your life. Yes. Especially pleasures like, you know, luxury, food or sex life, indulging with uh, members of the opposite sex. Uh, and then, you know, just having children and just, you know, staying in that family and just doing no spiritual activities, just earning uh, or just uh, have, having no spiritual goal of life, basically. So it does not say one who is uh, materially engaged. It doesn't say engaged, okay, because everybody have to be materially engaged because everybody has this body which we have to maintain. So we have to work, we have to have a family, to have emotional comfort. So there's nothing wrong with that. But materially absorbed means these things are the goal of my life. That, And that is why you will see if you uh, speak about uh, Srimad Bhagavatam or Gita to people in general, to the most of the general public because they are not interested. They say, oh, we don't need this. No, I'm busy. 
I, I I have to watch cricket. I have to watch movies. I have to watch TV. I have to watch television, news. I have to watch internet. I have to do Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram. I have to go to somebody's wedding. I have to go to this birthday party. I have this celebration here. I have this. I have that. Actually, you know, I would love to come to your discourse, but the problem is I somehow don't have time. Why do they feel like that? Because they are materially absorbed. So materialistic. Uh, enjoyment, they have a tendency to make you forgetful of God because they give you an illusory sense of pleasure or comfort or happiness which lasts for a very short time. But uh, it is it is so addictive that you even if you know that you won't get much pleasure, you still keep indulging in it again and again and again and again. All right, and therefore we uh, the people who indulge like this without any spiritual goal in mind their situation is precarious under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master once become one becomes gradually purified so let's read this and uh, we can discuss later under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master one becomes gradually purified therefore one must be in the chain of disciplic succession and learn the spiritual art of submissive hearing in the case of Sud Goswami and the sages of Naimisharanya all these conditions are fulfilled because Srila Sud Goswami is in the line of Srila Vyasdev and the sages of Naimisharanya are all sincere souls who are anxious to learn the truth thus the transcendental topics of Lord Sri Krishna's superhuman activities, his incarnation, his birth, his appearance or disappearance, his forms, his name and so on are all easily understandable because all requirements are fulfilled. Such discourses help all men on the path of spiritual realization. All men, women, humans. <laughs> Okay, so what is what's mentioned here in the first? So here basically the qualifications for the speaker and the hearer both are mentioned. The conditions for hearing the transcendental message of the absolute truth are set forth herein. The first condition is that the audience must be very sincere and eager to hear. All right. So that is the first condition that the audience has to be sincere and eager. And in fact, in my own uh, limited experience of going to spiritual communities, I have seen uh, many of my God brothers who have made rapid, 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 rapid spiritual progress. Even uh, God sisters also I have seen. The most striking quality that I have seen in them is their inquisitiveness to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the most striking quality that I have seen in them. I remember when um, when I used to go to some uh, spiritual community, uh, some program, I used to see you know, some of my godmothers, especially a few of them, they would always have competition. Who will sit in uh, directly in front of the speaker? Okay, so that's not a, um, that is not like a mundane competition, okay, where you try to be in the front. It's not like that, but it's like, it, it's like saying their eagerness is so great that they are always, you know, eyeing on that first seat so that when they are sitting in the exactly in the front of the guru, then they can directly hear from his mouth, you know, not from the mic. So uh, I have seen uh, them doing like this, and uh, whoever has done this, they have made rapid. It's like going like a rocket, <laughs> and they have taken leaps and bounds in their spiritual life, and they have. They have uplifted themselves and they have uplifted so many others also, right? Why? Because they are they are very eager and they are very sincere to hear. So that is the secret of advancement in spiritual life, to develop eagerness and sincerity to hear the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now the, condi the conditions of the speaker are mentioned here. And the speaker must be in the line of disciplic succession from the recognized Acharya. So basically this means the uh, speaker should uh, be 
following one of the traditions of the four bona fide uh, Vaishnava Sampradayas, like the Brahma Sampradaya, Shri Sampradaya, Kumar Sampradaya, Rudra Sampradaya. These four are the bona fide Sampradayas, okay? And the transcendental message of the absolute truth is not understandable by those who are materially absorbed that we already discussed. Under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master, one becomes gradually purified. Okay. As the Bhagavatam says, Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya. Bhagavati Ruttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. Okay. Gradually purified. Spiritual process is also gradual. Okay. So sometimes people. They don't have patience and then they say, oh, I am chanting this mantra from last two months. Why is it not giving results? When will I see results? Results, 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 results. Oh, you only want results. You, you, uh, those people who come to spirituality seeking quick results or not only quick, you know, their only concern is results. I have seen that it's just a matter of time. They go away. They don't, they don't follow very long. For very long. Those people who want the results, but they are also ready to make the sacrifice and enjoy the uh, enjoy the journey, which is the most important factor in spiritual life. Only they sustain for a long time. Otherwise, it's just a matter of time. You will fall out. Okay, you will get back to your old habits, and then you will ruin the rest of your life doing simply nothing. By being materially absorbed. Okay. Therefore, one must be in the chain of disciplic succession and learn the art, spiritual art of submissive hearing. Now, that's very interesting here. The sages of Naimi Sharanya, who are headed by uh, Shona Krishi, they are also very, 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 very elevated sages. They are like the they are like the cream of the entire universe. You know? So they are so elevated. They must have heard these things hundred thousand million billion trillion times. Whatever Sudhu Swami is about to tell, they must have heard it countless times. All of them. And they they may be even able to speak it equally, uh, which is you know equally palatable I would say or equally as knowledgeable as Sudh Goswami but even then they are sitting and they are letting Sudh Goswami speak why because they, 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 they think that Sudh Goswami is more elevated than them this is opposite of materialistic societies where materialistic people who are obsessed always as usual <laughs> The only thing they want is they want their name to be praised. You know, every they just they want that everybody here should come to know that I am the best person in the room. Yes, that is what everybody wants. Even even anywhere people go, you know, especially uh, I know people who uh, go to weddings, but their focus is not on whose wedding it is. Okay. The focus is not on congratulating somebody who is getting married. Mm. Their focus is we will we will dress for you know three hours, four hours for this uh, for the one hour wedding, and then uh, everybody else in the wedding will be noticing me, and then they will be thinking, oh wow, this person is the most beautiful creation of God. Okay, and uh, the funny thing is everybody is looking at who is looking at them so actually nobody is looking at you everybody is looking at you to check if you are looking at them <laughs> and you waste four hours five hours six hours sometimes in makeup for um, for a wedding sometimes or a birthday or some some fake celebration which people do so or you go to you know any conferences or anything or any technical workshops and there also you know people are like oh actually I did this you know it's me who did this you know I I know this you know in this team I did this that is why this happened you know people trying to subtly prove their points show that they are very great but 
in spiritual life it doesn't work like that it's the opposite actually the more you try to prove and show that you know you are extraordinary the more fallen you are basically because one who doesn't have humility will only do this and if you are not having humility to admit the fact that we are fallen then our situation is very bad actually it's getting worse because a great soul always feels that uh, he or she is always at fault okay this is not inferiority complex inferiority complex means uh, you know that you lack somewhere and then that is why you are you know feeling bad about yourself but humility means although although you are not lacking anywhere but you still feel as if you lack you know that is like because of your because of your humility that's in sattva guna okay inferiority complex is in tamo guna that inferiority complex is a product of self absorption okay i am not able to compete with this him or her so what will happen you know i will fall back he or she will cross me that is that's a product of envy basically okay and that is why uh, many film stars many cricketers many politicians many sports stars or many famous personalities they also go into depression why because their whole life is centered around comparing oneself with others oh this person is better than me what will happen i will pull him down i will drag him down you know how does she say like this and you know, i am better than her okay so that is how materialistic society is and that is why it is it is the materialistic society that is why everybody is suffering and nobody is happy suicides are increasing so many people i know they are committing um, you know they are not committing but they are wanting to commit suicide why because they see others have exceeded than them okay now they don't understand the fundamental principle of karma that whatever you do if if you are not destined to reach there you will not reach so we should do our best and let karma take care of the rest but people don't follow this people think that i am here he is here she is here so i should exceed them okay but the thing is your the results are not only dependent on your actions your past karma also matters and there are so many things as geeta says you know there are five factors but people don't know all this so therefore they come into anxiety when they see that somebody is exceeding them and therefore in the materialistic society my guru used to say people want you to succeed people want you to succeed but not more than them the moment you cause them then they become your enemies even i have seen family members brothers sisters cousins sometimes parents and sometimes children also so husband wife becoming enemies when they see somebody is excelling more than them i have seen all this you have also seen i am very sure and till the time you are behind them they will encourage you sometimes okay they will say ah oh, no no problem you know you will you can do it it's good you know just try it will happen so essentially they mean uh, anyways you are a fool you know you can't come anyways but yeah if you, you can't come near to me but if you try you can still walk okay so that is the attitude of people so the moment you cause them their envy is like becoming like a blazing fire and then they try to pull you down they try to restrict you, you know? they try to prove that even though you are good but you can't be better than them they are the best okay and everybody else is inferior so this is a very crucial point when it comes to spirituality because in spiritual life it is totally the opposite to the degree we are humble and we feel unqualified to that degree we are qualified actually and the best example of this there no, is not one best there are so many examples especially you know for example uh, pralal maharaj you know when nursing dev comes and he he is so angry because this hiranyakashyapu has tormented pralal so much and therefore even after he rips apart the stomach of hiranyakashyapu he is still angry and he is you know roaring and it appears as if the entire universe is going to be destroyed because of his anger his eyes are red like fire like coal or sometimes they say red like copper <laughs> and his, his fumes are coming out from his body and you know, he's just going on killing whoever is there and then lord brahma wants to go and pacify him but he cannot 
he is fearful. What will happen if I go near him? <laughs> then he requests Lord Shiva, my dear Lord Shiva, please go and pacify him. Lord Shiva says, I can't. Then they request Goddess Lakshmi, my dear Goddess Lakshmi, Mother Lakshmi, he is your husband, just somehow pacify him. Then Mother Lakshmi says, I know he is my husband, but I have never seen him so angry and so furious. So I don't know what to do, what to speak, how to behave. And then Brahma, Lord Brahma understands that there is only one personality in this entire universe. Not this universe, in the entire creation of Mahavishnu. Who can pacify Lord Nursing Dev? Who is that personality? Yes, he is none other than Prahlad himself. Because Prahlad was the one for whom Lord Nursing Dev had taken this incarnation. He was the one upon whom Hiranyakashipu had you know, uh, imparted all these tortures. So much torture, my God. In fact, he tried to execute him so many times. You know, so much torture, so much suffering. But at the end, Narasimhdev came and ripped apart the stomach of Hiranyakashipu and he fell down to the ground. Dead, actually. You know, Narasimhdev, even after he was dead, he was actually uh, pulling out uh, Hiranyakashipu's intestines and he was checking that uh, is there any other great soul like uh, Prahlad within his body? You know, He was checking because he was so happy that this is the same body from which you know, Prahlad was born from his semen. So, so therefore... And then what Prahlad says? Prahlad does not say, you know, Oh, you Brahma, Shiva, Lakshmi, you guys are, you know, anyways outdated. You are old people, you know. It's my time now, after all. It's my generation, you see. You guys can't do it, you know. I will do now. You just sit and wait and watch what I do, you know. And then he doesn't go to Nursing Dev and say, Oh, Nursing Dev, you know, I know these people can't pacify. Only I can, actually. So please become pacified. He doesn't say like that, okay. In fact, he says, when if you read the seventh canto, you will understand his prayers. He says that you know, when great personalities like Brahma, Shiva, and Lakshmi, and others cannot pacify you, how can even I dream? How can I even think of pacifying you? And then he glorifies Narasimh Dev. And by seeing his humility, Lord Narasimh Dev is very happy. And then his anger subsides and he calms down and he asks Prahlad that he tell, he instructs Prahlad please ask for a blessing and Prahlad Maharaj says I am not a businessman that you come and do something for me and I ask you for a blessing and then Narasimh Dev again says but still please ask for something okay and then the whole uh, pastime of Narasimh Dev and Prahlad Maharaj we can, we can uh, go through that in the seventh canto okay so the point here is that humility should be there and we should have the eagerness and we should hear from a bona fide acharya, okay? Not from anybody who is just speaking because the knowledge is important but the flow... There was some uh, error in the recording, of course. Okay, so the as I was saying, knowledge is important, but the flow of knowledge is even more important. Okay, so therefore, it is very important that uh, because the example is given that although milk is very pure, but if a serpent comes and touches that, then that milk becomes poisonous. So uh, we should never hear the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam or read from any anywhere everywhere from some any random source okay because that can contaminate our consciousness because then what happens is we we because see the when the person is speaking then there is a frequency which the person is imparting he's not imparting the uh, philosophy basically he's imparting his own his own frequency his own thoughts basically okay so therefore it is very important that we are very eager and enthusiastic and we also hear from the right source. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you want a consultation from me, then please go down to the website down in the description section. And if you have not watched the previous videos from this playlist, then please watch them. And if you are new, then please subscribe to the channel. 
and like this video and share it with your family members and friends all right thank you very much god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him